Yes. Yeah, let's get started. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining our first virtual happy hour. Uh, my name is Emma. I'm with the Gregory and Vine team, and a lot of our Gregory and Vine team members are here as well. If you could just hold up your hand, say hi. <laughs> um, we it really have, is the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> we have a very special host tonight, Rick Fisher, aka the Spanish Wine Guy. Um, before I introduce him completely, I just want to make sure everyone knows that where the the buttons are so if you see a little x through the microphone that means you're on mute so you can unmute yourself and mute yourself if you have some background noise um, it looks like half of you guys are muted so if you're saying things and we can't hear you that's why um, as rick said there's also the chat box so keep an eye on that for some messages um, and yeah just be ready to share what, what you're drinking with everybody um, Rick is the Education Director of the Spanish Wine Scholar Guild. That program launched, launched last October, and since then there have been over 550 students enrolled in the program. He's currently working on his WSET diploma, and he's traveled to Spain numerous times. He's very knowledgeable about Spain and all the specific regions within Spain, so he's here to share his knowledge and passion with us, and yeah. Rick, what are you drinking tonight? So I am drinking, uh, let me actually put it in the box so you guys, because I'm sure a lot of people are probably jotting notes too. So this is the uh, 2017 Sin Nombre, and um, it is exactly what it says, it is without a name. Um, and so actually before I tell you a little bit about the wine and the region and whatnot, I say we raise a glass and cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Oh, that's not fair. Charlotte gets the toast to actually cling a glass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. So, so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually share my screen um, just to kind of give you a little bit of a high level on what, what this is and where we are. Um, all right, so, all right. So do you guys see the map of Spain here? Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. yeah. So this, just so you guys know, so these maps, the two maps that I'm gonna show you today, these are actually maps from our uh, Spanish Wine Scholar Manual. Um, they're, they're part of the, the program uh, that, that, we, uh, that we operate with the Wine Scholar Guild. And so this is the full map of Spain with all of the denominations of origin uh, in Spain. And uh, you can see here, uh, so actually, for those of you who aren't aware, so we're actually in Castilla Leon. And let me see if uh, the mouse here works. You should be able to see the mouse now. So we're actually up kind of in this, in this northern part of the country. And this area, this part of Spain here, in, in mo in covers a good part of Spain is called the Meseta. And so, you know, it's interesting kind of, even when like when you're driving through the country or taking the train through the country, everything really feels very flat in a lot of places, but this sits at elevations of over 2000 feet. So, you know, Madrid actually um, is the second highest capital in Europe um, behind the capital of Andorra, uh, right up here by Catalonia in France. And so it really is kind of fascinating when you think about that all of these vines are actually growing at higher elevations than, uh, I mean, you know, unless you get somewhere into the coastal regions in Galicia here or along the coast here um, in the Mediterranean coast. But for the most part in Castilla Leon, uh, all of the vineyards grow at least at, at uh, 2,000 uh, plus feet. Now, if we drill in a little bit on Castilla Leon, you can see here. Uh, so this, I'm drinking, this is, this sin nombre is a Verdejo, uh, which is one of Spain's indigenous grapes. And uh, it is actually um, from, the, the grape itself is indigenous to this region. Let me get my annotation back on here. Uh, to this region here of Rueda. Uh, so in, you know, a little bit south central part of Castilla Leon. Now, it, this is a predominantly white wine region, just like, for example, Ria Spicius is with Albertino. This is the same for, for, um, for Verdejo. In, in, interestingly enough, this region produces 40% of Spain's white wine. It is heavily occupied by co-ops, 
Um, and so, I mean, for those of you guys, if I think everybody, most everybody lives in the US, you have a Trader Joe's near you, if you see a Verdejo there, uh, it is likely produced from this region from a co-op. But there are a number of really, really cool small producers in the region as well, like uh, Jose Pariente, uh, there are a handful of others. Now, this particular wine that I'm drinking, the Sin Nombre, is from just outside of the region. So you guys see Segovia here. It actually sits right here in the foothills of the Sistema Central Mountains. So it's sitting actually at a little bit higher elevations. It's, uh, they are, let me see here, upwards of close to 3,000 feet. And so the, the guy who, let me unshare this and get back to you guys. There we are. Um, and so the interesting, I don't know if, if anybody here ever heard of the producer Ocean from Rueda. Mm -mm. So they're like, they're like one of Rueda's high end, uh, really high end Verdejo producers. And the guy who used to be a winemaker for them, his name is, uh, let me see, I've got it right here, Ismael Gosalo. And he actually had his, started his own, this winery that he has now before he even went to work with Ocean, but he's very much a naturalist. And so he, he made wine for them. He did, you know, help them get great fame. And now he's doing his own thing. And so the, this, the Sin Nombre here, um, I kind of wanted to pick on a couple of things that are becoming really popular in Spain right now. And that is uh, number one, indigenous grapes. There's a, there's a really a move towards working with indigenous varieties, whether they're red or they're white. So, um, you know, one of the things too that I always like to say, I mean, I, I like French wine. I love Spanish wine. I like French wine, but I will tell you, Grenache, Mouvedre, uh, and Carignan, those are Spanish grapes. So they come from Spain, they're indigenous to Spain. In fact, two of those, uh, Carignana and Garnacha, are both uh, indigenous to Aragon the, in and of itself. And then you've got uh, Mouvedre, which is Monastrel, which is indigenous to uh, the Valencia region. And it's, per, and it's uh, grown heavily in, in Valencia and in Murcia, just down the, down, down the Mediterranean coast. Now, uh, with Ismael, what he's done with this is, this is 100% uh, Verdejo. It is 100% natural, unfined, unfiltered, no sulfites. Um, it is about as, I mean, I looked at some pictures from his website the other day, and he's got like these crazy sellers. He's got Demijohn uh, bottles that have stuff in them, and God knows what's in there. Um, but I will tell you, this is absolutely an incredible example of what Verdejo really, really can and should taste like. Um, it is super crisp and fresh. It's got really nice acidity. It has a, a really nice tartness to it and um, some really good citrus fruit. And what's really interesting, um, like I was you know, saying, you know, indigenous grapes is a, really big, is a really big trend right now, but also natural wines are gaining a lot of popularity. Spain actually um, has more um, acreage under, I'm sorry, well, for organic vineyards, organic and biodynamic vineyards, Spain has more acreage than any other, than any other country in the world, uh, right ahead of France. And so um, this is the, I mean, this is the way that Ismael actually works. He works with organic and biodynamic. Um, his, his whole philosophy is to show the grape the way that the grape, you know, should be shown. And so I just want to make sure, so these, so you guys know, the, the vineyards here are ungrafted pre phylloxeric vines that range from 100 to 200 years old. Uh, this part of Spain, and in, in particular in Rueda and Toro, which, which neighbors it, um, has some of the largest concentration of pre phylloxeric vines um, of anywhere in, um, in Spain and in, in many places, in, in many ways in Europe, because they're in sandy, they're heavily sandy soils and the phylloxera could not, cannot live in, in these sandy soils. And so these vines here are uh, 100 to 200 years old, He's, and the, they have never, ever, ever used chemicals on any of the vineyards here. So over the course of the five generations that his family has owned these vineyards, they have never once used chemicals. And there's, there's, so there's no, um, I mean, what's interesting is, you know, we have such, such a, um, Natural wines is such a misnomer in so many ways. You know, wine is natural in and of itself. But this movement, I mean, I think all of us who have tried natural wines have tried some really 
shitty ones. And, um, and so we've tried some really, really great ones. And so um, I would tell you, this is one of the absolute best uh, natural wines I have ever tasted. You would never know it was natural unless somebody told you. And so, um, and I, there was a quote on this, on this, this wine by the producer that I thought was so funny. And I, and I really don't know what it means. And Tasha, maybe you can actually tell me what he means by this. Um, but he says, and this was translated into English. He says, um, let's see, there's no corrections of acidity, enhancements, no, CO, no additions of CO2, unclarified, unfiltered, no batonnage. And then he says, when finishing a bottle, you feel more at ease than a rooster. And I had no clue what that meant. I, I, I don't know if that has to do with some, you know, you know, bizarre Spanish, you know, something or other, but, uh, you know, all I could, you know, all I can envision now is this rooster, you know, crawling behind, you know, and, you know, and me I not can't it. think of a, uh, uh, a saying, I don't know, Javi, you're there. Más contento que un gallo. Es un dicho. Más contento que un gallo. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've, I've never heard, heard about that. I haven't either. So, uh, Rick, I'm... <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That well, I just, true. I thought it was funny. I read it. I read it like four or five times. And I just started cracking up every time I read it because, you know, he says, you feel more at ease than a rooster. And I don't know. I mean, I don't think roosters appear, you know, particularly high strung or anything. Um, so I just kind of <laughs> felt like, all right. Um, so, uh, so that's pretty much, that is my wine. Uh, interesting. The other thing is I was going to say that another big trend, so we've got indigenous grapes, we've got uh, natural wines. And the other is a lot of producers nowadays are, are actually making wines that are, that are either the, the rules within the region do not allow them the opportunity to create the wine that they want to create, whether it's by a grape variety that they're using or um, a method that they're using. And so there's a big trend for a lot of producers to actually label the wine as just vino de España. And so, uh, you know, there's a, for, for those of you, are, some of you guys know who Envinate, the guys from in, the group from Envinate, it's four winemakers that met in college. Um, kind of a cult group now, uh, work through the Canary Islands, work in Rivera Sacra, uh, in Andalusia. Phenomenal wines, if you guys can, if you come across those, I would highly encourage you to, to uh, pick some of those up. But they label their wines Vinos de España as well. And so, you know, just for those of you when you're shopping and you, you know, if you, you, do, if you don't see a DO label, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is a low quality wine. Um, this is, like I said, one of the best Verdejos I've ever tasted. Uh, I think it probably retails for about 30 US dollars, um, but it's spectacular. And um, before I pass along, I actually want to introduce you guys to Jose Carlos. Hola, Jose. ¿Cómo está? Hello. How are you? Good um, How are you doing? I'm good. Hey, it's great to have you have you with us here today. So Jose Thank Carlos so um, is uh, in Madrid. Uh, he lives in Madrid, and he um, his lovely wife is on my actually center square, Natasha. And uh, I don't know if everybody how everybody everybody's boxes pop up, but it's kind of fun because like you literally Tasha are center square for me. Yeah. Um, and so uh, Jose Carlos. I, I don't live, uh, actually, I don't live in Madrid, in the, in the, in the city of Madrid. So where are you? Days. I, I live uh, in a small village, uh, 30 miles away from Madrid, okay. which is wonderful these days. Living, so. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so, uh, so Jose Carlos uh, works uh, in, in, in and around Madrid, and he works uh, with wine, and, you know, when I, I met him, about a year and a half ago when we were in, in Madrid and he took us to this amazing wine shop. Um, Thank you. You know, and uh, it's called um, Barolo, Inoteca yep. Barolo. So if any of you guys ever go, got to write that down. You have to hit them up. They have an amazing selection of, uh, of Spanish wines. And so, um, Jose Carlos, uh, first off, uh, tell us what are you drinking tonight? Because uh, tonight for you, it mm -hmm. is about, what, almost 10 o'clock, I think? And, uh, no problem. It's my and, then, time uh, now, and then so. give us a little bit of, of your take on, on what are some of the trends that are happening in Spain and Spanish wine right now? 
Okay. I'm drinking a wine from a very, very small project. This winery is called Juliana de la Rosa. And I am drinking the, the Leonor de la Rosa uh, from 2017. This, is a, this wine is made 100% Malvar. It's from Madrid, of course. This is my, my, my small tribute to, to my city today. So it's a wine from Madrid. It's 100% uh, Malvar grape, and it's, uh, it has a, a little touch of oak, but it's, it's very clean. And it's, it's one of these Malvars. You know, it's becoming, uh, wines from Madrid, fortunately, are becoming very, very popular. Mm -hmm. Especially wines from the north, from the mountains. This, uh, this is the, the area near to Sierra de Gredos. And, and the most popular thing from this area, as you know, is uh, Garnacha or Reds. But they are making a very good wine from Malbar, which is very unknown grape even here in Spain. So, um, but this uh, Leonor de la Rosa is one of these creamy and, and fat in mouth uh, Malbar uh, wines. So, this is uh, this is this is a wine I really love. Jose Carlos, nice. are you seeing a lot of hundred percent Malbar? Because I know that I mean that's a grape that's also indigenous to the area there. Um, and it, and I know that, you know, we don't see any of those in the States. And so I'm curious if mm -hmm. you're starting to see more of, more of a production of those out there. Okay. Uh, Malvar is a grape, uh, it's a local grape here in Madrid. Uh, they have a little bit in Castilla Leon in the Ribera de Duero area as well, but mostly of the, of the production of Malvar is, is in Madrid. It's one of the grapes. Uh, that we use here, uh, one of the legal grapes for the DO. So, and it's one of, it's, it, for me, it's very similar to the Garnacha Blanca, Garnacha White from, from Priorat. It's a little bit less alcoholic, but it's one of these uh, varieties that I love. Uh, fatty, again, fatty and big in mouth, but non. Uh, or almost almost nothing aromatic, you know what I mean? It's it's not it's not a Sauvignon Blanc, it's not a Verdejo, it's not a Albariño. It's something very neutral in nose, but uh, the the mouth is really powerful. So this is a a style of wine that I love, and this is something. There are a few of producers making wines from Malbar, hundred percent Malbar, but I think this it, this is going to be. Uh, more and more popular. Yeah. What are well, some of the other trends? Tendencies. You were asking about tendencies, and this is made near the Sierra de, de Gredos, and I think that region, the Sierra de Gredos, is one of the most you know interesting emerging uh, regions right now um, in Spain. Yeah, and but, yeah, but uh, uh, Sierra de Gredos has its own grape, which is Albillo, Albillo Mayor or Albillo Real. You are going to find Albillo from Sierra de Gredos. And now, uh, probably you know that since uh, January, it's, it's legal to make wines, uh, to make white wines from Ribera de Duero under the label, under the DO. So you are, you are going to, to begin to see more and more wines made from... Uh, Malvar, uh, sorry, for, from Albillo, from Rivera del Duero. It, that's going to be a very, very nice alternative to, to, to Verdejo. Um, and even here in Madrid, um, Albillo is becoming, becoming popular. So Malvar is going is to be a second step, a second, second uh, level. Uh, but believe me, all, all these wines are very well done. And this is something that if you see it, uh, I know that there are just a few of uh, wines from Alvar in the US. But if you see it, try it. Because they used to be made uh, from small producers and with a very, very good quantity. All right, so let's do this. Um... 
Okay, so I want to see, I mean, every, people have been posting in here what they're drinking, which I think is very cool. Um, and what I want to do is I want to have you guys share a little bit about your wine. So instead of everybody rushing to one at one time, what I'm going to have you do is if you want to share about your wine, hold your glass up and then I will call on you to tell us a little bit about what you're drinking and, uh, you know, what you know about it. And then we'll kind of go from there. Who wants to be the guinea pig and start? Okay, Emma, I saw your glass up, so uh, I'm gonna give Emma the uh, <laughs> the Okay, <mic. laughs> I'll start. I actually opened this bottle two days ago, so I don't know how fresh it is. Like, I think it was better two days ago, but uh, it's Minthia, that's a varietal. Uh, this is the first time that I'm tasting this varietal, and the producer is Vina Reboreda, uh, vintage is 2016. There are 12 degrees of alcohol, and it says that it's from Ribero, which is in Galicia, so northwest Spain. Um, but yeah, it's got this nice kind of rust, dark red, rusty color, and it definitely had some nicer aromas two days ago. I probably should have opened up a fresh bottle, but it's really, really nice. It's not super overpowering. Um, but it has some some nice aromas that very it's not light it's kind of medium I would say yeah and so Re Ribeiro um, in Galicia up in that northwestern part of that area that sits above Portugal um, is predominantly known for white wine uh, mostly from the uh, the main grape there is Trechadura but you know these areas of Galicia do grow with the with the reception with the exception of Ribera Sacra which is which is almost which is predominantly a red wine region. Um, in Galicia, you know, they really do work with a lot of these grapes. And Mencia is actually um, indigenous to the region in Castilla Leon and Bierzo in that area right there. So there's a lot of Mencia that's grown um, across in, uh, in Galicia as well. So great. Thanks. Thanks for sharing, Emma. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think Daniel had his glass up before and I want to make sure I don't uh, pass you over. So Daniel, give it a shot, bud. Thanks. How's it going? Good. So I'm drinking uh, Bodega Mustagio. It's a Merceguera. Um, the wine is actually labeled as Vino de España, um, even though the producer's from Util Riquena, uh, primarily a Bobal producer. Uh, I don't think Merceguera is uh, I, an authorized DO varietal, is, you know, but it is an indigenous varietal. Um, so really, really delicious wine like cooked lemons and pears and kind of like a Chardonnay feel with great texture, kind of medium acidity, um, but a little bit of weight, not too much fruit, but really great texture. It's bare, it's, I think it's, it's aged in barrel, um, really high quality wine. I want to say it runs for about like 35 bucks a bottle. Uh, good stuff. That's cool. So Mustagio is actually one of the Vinos de Pago. Uh, one of the 19 yep. Pago, um, and don't get that confused with Grandes Pagos. That Grandes Pagos is actually an organization that you can join. Uh, Vino de Pago is actually a, a PDO or DOP level wine. And so in Mustaguillo, they only are a lot authorized to produce red wine under the Pago. And so that may be another reason why you see it as Vino de España, uh, because Merceguera is a grape that is, I mean, I think if I remember correctly, they're one of the ones that actually worked on reviving this grape. Um, and so it's, uh, you know, they do have another, um, a wine that they produce at a much lower level than, than the Mustagio, but that's where, and so you found that up in, up in NorCal, Daniel? Yeah, in San Francisco. So I think Valkyrie Selections. That's great. Uh, what's in, this one, I mean, they have their, their lower tier Bobal and, and the white blend pretty, you know, you can find it pretty often, really beautiful kind of tile looking label. Yeah. Uh, but this is actually kind of like a, a special order. Yeah, that's great. That's that's a really fun one. That's a really fun one to to show. All right, so who's next? See, all right, cat. Yay, cat! Don't forget to unmute yourself. Maybe I should stay muted. So I'm cheating here because um, I'm popping in, and it's oddly enough a little early for me to start on wine. So I'm starting with gin, 
um, because that's what I do to wake up in the morning and that's what I do when I'm in Spain to wake up. So I am having a Spanish gin to at least stay within the theme and the confines here. So uh, a nice little cheers and salute to you all. Um, I only have a little bit left of the Nordes and the nut mm -hmm. gin, so I'm going with my gin mare because I have a full bottle of that, and I don't know when I'll be getting more of the Nordes. Um, and I would hope that you've all had gin mare at this point because we're all Spanish lovers of something. But uh, a little Valencia orange, a little Barcelona orange, and probably another orange of some sort in here to uh, awaken the senses, some good olive uh, botanicals, and a lot of love. Cheers to you all. Hi, everybody. For anybody that doesn't know me yet, I'm a loudmouth in Las Vegas. <laughs> and um, for anybody that has had the, I'll say, fortune, <laughs> of getting to know me. It's great to see you all here. Hi, Thanks, Thanks Kat. Thanks, Kat. It's really hey, kind Kat. of unfair. I, would, I, mean, if we, if I think we should all do Ginny and Tonics as our next virtual hangout here. Kat, so. Kat do you, do you, is that what you, uh, is that your drink of choice with, during your yoga classes? Um, right after the yoga, because then my open to all of the greatness of it. I'm really primed for it. Before yoga, um, it's usually just vodka. So, <laughs> no, pure, pure, and then it builds the intensity. So. Kat really li literally does not start, she's not an alcoholic, trust me, okay? Um, <laughs> but she works I don't for the yet. I mean, she works for the Hakkasan restaurant group. So once Vegas opens its doors again, uh, you guys have to go visit in uh, the MGM Grand. Um, she's, uh, she's an incredible host. Um, so definitely, definitely need to do that. So thanks. That's, Kat. that's just gonna... being a connoisseur. <laughs> I'm like, thanks. No, really. I mean, oddly enough, 2.30 is it's just, I didn't want to pop a, a bottle yet. I just, I mean, gin is fine at 2.30. I wasn't joking, so. Gin's fine at noon. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you all for having or, me. Or for you, vodka at noon and yoga and then gin at 2.30. So, um, all right. So, who's next? And if I don't get a volunteer, I'm calling on somebody. Okay, uh, Marlena. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to steal your thunder. So I have El Coto. It's 2017. It's made with Viora, but I know it better as Macabeo. Uh, Sauvignon Blanc and Verdejo. It's very tart and super crisp. It's pretty acidic, um, but not overpowering. And it's a really good food wine. I, I like it for that, personally. And it's from Rioja. Awesome. Did I cover everything? I think so. Uh, what's the vintage on it? Uh, this is 2017, I want to say. Yeah, and it's DOC. Um, and in New York and New Jersey, it's Frederick Wildman. It's who imports it. Super. Yeah. Super. Okay, excuse me, which one is the wine? Sorry, I didn't it's hear you. El Coto. Ah, El Coto, okay. Yeah. All right. Rio Ha region. Super. And I had to go out especially for it because I'm at my parents' house and they, their wine collection is dwindling. So. <laughs> <laughs> As are all of New ours. New retailers these days. <laughs> I mean, all of ours, I, I, it's so funny because I, I started to see mine dwindle quite a bit because in, in California, you know, we're under stay at home, but you can go out to exercise if you want um, mm -hmm. or for essentials. And in California, they've actually, you know, wine shops are actually considered essential. And Same they, in New York and New Jersey. Which is great. And they've kept them open. So, you know, I'm trying to do my best to support local now. And I think I've purchased more wine in the last week than I did in the last two months. So, um, you know, I don't know if that's good or bad, but I think I'm going through it a little bit faster right now, too, because I'm going a little stir crazy. Everybody is, yeah. And my parents are like wine world drinkers. They'll drink from anywhere. But right now, the collection is California, California. So I had to go out and get my Spanish wine. But Thanks for doing that. Thanks share, for, it shared, uh -huh. like it's saved in my apartment. So when I get home, I have more to look forward to, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody else? Who's next? I want to see who has, who's this with the mask, with the Mascarillo de Rioja on? <laughs> Do you see the background? Oh, Wait, yeah. Okay. That, it says iPad on there. Uh, got a hat with the yeah you you what's your name come on talk to us Un unmute yourself and uh 
Okay. You have to unmute yourself. Oh, I, mean, I think I can do that. Hold on. Oh, you can do that? Uh, yep, there it is. He's, he's live. There we go. Finally. <laughs> All right. Yes, so, we know that graphic. <laughs> from I love this graphic. It makes perfect sense for right now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you want to explain it to everybody? It's the... <laughs> it is, I think it was part of the Riola. I think I might have snagged it off of somebody's site because I just loved it so much. And we did a virtual tasting uh, dance party DJ thing this past week, and I thought it was just fun to use. So it just makes awesome. a little sense with everything going on right now. That's yeah, it's, a, it's a muscat what it, How do you say masks? Spanish speakers, mascarilla Rioja. Is that what it is? No sé si 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 se dice así. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> mascarilla. But I do have my Spanish wine. I don't know what the virtual background if you can see it very well. Uh, I brought. What, like what I said, it's so hard when you do the virtual. Is, it is that a Aquilia? It is an Aquilia. Yeah, it's a 2013 Mencia. Uh, it is, this is the Viarin, uh, the old vine, I believe, uh, designation. So I always thought this was a great wine. Bought a couple of bottles because Mencia now is getting better play for ageability. And uh, this is actually the first one that I actually popped open. It's tasting really great. Phenomenal producer, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he, he's great. I actually, um, I happened to be in, uh, I met him in, in uh, February in Barcelona for Barcelona, during Barcelona Wine Week. And he does a lot of natural wine as well. So kind of sticking with a lot of that theme. Cool, cool. So awesome. All right, so who's next? Oh, Trish, thanks for volunteering. Okay. <laughs> We, we are drinking a very big wine. Hi, Jay. <laughs> Hi, Jay. We've got a, um, a Scala Day, the must, must do, must do, help me out with the pronunciation. Um, a Grenache. Must do. Yeah. Must do. So it's, um, what does Jay think of it? It's big. I like it. It's chewy <laughs> and it's my kind of wine. We, I think we need some food with this wine. Anyway, the cheese and the, uh, yeah, the yeah. baguette aren't cutting it. Anyway, it's um, so 100%. It's Garnacha, um, high, high terraced vineyards, eight, 800 meters, um, and old vines from Priorat. And that's the Scala Day, right? The, the yeah. winery is Scala Day? Yes. Yeah, those guys are great. That is a big, meaty wine, though. I mean, it's a good thing you're not cat drinking that at 2.30. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I think Helen wants to share what she's drinking. Hi, Helen. Hey, guys. Hey, Rick. So I'm actually, I'm kind of, I was, I poured a teeny tiny amount of what was open in the refrigerator okay, because right before this, I got back from, it's 72 degrees and sunny and it's been gloomy and awful for those of us in the Midwest. Um, so I went for a quick run and I am going to open something, but I did grab because I like it. The Lox, the Alberni Lexus. And I think I may open this because it's going to, it's going to be warm and sunny, but this, I've had it many times before. Classic Ria Spicious Alberino. Um, I think actually a little bit creamier, a little bit more sore lees than some. Um, so, you know, I'm just giving a big shout out to the the people of Ria Spicious right now who have been very, very, um, have been amazing to work with and who are holding strong and doing lots of good right now for their community. Um, so anyway, this is, this is what I'm hoping to drink later um, when my husband emerges, emerges from his conference call and um, decides that it's time to break something open on the patio. So awesome. cheers to all. Thank you, Helen. All right, who's next? Um, I think I want to hear from our, our, our resident Spanish speaker, Javi Rodrigo. Javi, hola. <laughs> hola, ¿qué tal? How are you guys? Hola. So I'm drinking hola, Javi. Pazo Señorans, 100% Albariño, 2018. Good one. Um, medium high intensity, peat and citric, and it's my, my favorite. It's my favorite Albariño. 
they're a phenomenal producer. For those yeah. of you who, guys who don't know, Paco de Senorans, they are amazing. And they do a, a selection, which is um, aged on the lease for a minimum of 30 months. And uh, it's amazing. I think the current vintage on that, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, is 2010. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, we tried a 2003 about a year and a half ago, and it was as fresh and clean and citric as, as, it sh as, as if it were, you know, a 2018. So very, uh, very, very cool. Thanks for sharing, Javi. Hey, uh, so Josephine, I know that you're, I saw you waving. I couldn't hear you though. Your sound's not coming through. Hey, there can we you are. hear me okay? Yes. I was trying to test out my computer microphone and it wasn't working, but I was quickly able to dial in on my phone. So hi everyone. Buenas noches. So sad day. <laughs> the pet Buenas everyone noches. Is. Um, so thank you guys for having me. This is definitely my first official oh, yeah. Spanish wine tasting. The good news is that I, I had some bottle hoarded at, hoarded at home. Um, what I'm drinking, as I shared earlier, to get my notes, and I'll bring out the bottle now. I'm drinking uh, Bodegas Valdemar. It's a brand. The name of the wine is Inspiración Valdemar, Alto Cantabria, Tempranillo Blanco. Um, I've stated in the name, the varietal here is just 100% Tempranillo. Um, the vintage is 2016. The region is Rioja, or Rioja. Um, alcohol 12% and price is 26. Um, I used to work on this brand, so it was funny that I finally had some time to, to taste it. Um, and I have some other goodies in my in my apartment. I realized, um, and I'm very surprised that I hadn't tasted this before because had I, um, I would have been drinking this more often. Um, I always um, I always find it interesting to try different white wines, especially when you're in a white wine mood that can just be enjoyed on its own. Um, the notes I got from this when I first opened it were in terms of aroma, pear, lemon. It has this beautiful, I don't know whether to say golden lemon um, or one or the other, but it's this nice age color to it. Um, the aromas and, and the taste as well have a mixture of ripe fruits like pears, mangoes, and, and at least to me, I'm finding it to be a wine that can be enjoyed on its own on its own or with some snacks. Like in moments like this, I can imagine myself once this is over, whenever I have a break, sitting on my couch, getting out some popcorn um, and, and turning on a show. Um, it doesn't require a heavy meal. Um, although it is a heavier wine than most whites that have this um, level of acidity. But, um, but yeah, um, we'd love to know if, if you heard of the brand or or learn more of the, the grapes, because I'm no expert. <laughs> no, that's actually, I mean, it's really cool that you pulled uh, a Tempranillo Blanco. So, um, so Rioja, I mean, this grape is not, you know, it, it was brought back from extinction in this region, and it is a color variant for Tempranillo, the red grape Tempranillo. Um, it is, uh, so there are not a lot of producers, it, there's not a lot of production of it at this point. Um, they're actually doing more planting of it right now because they wow. are finding, and again, this kind of goes back to this whole indigenous grape situation that we were talking about where, you know, the, the regions and the country itself is really trying to, to, to bring to the forefront the things that, that are very popular there. Um, so I think it's very fun that you, you know, pulled, whether on purpose or on accident, um, <laughs> Tempranillo Blanco. So Valdemar is a great producer. Um, so, you know, I'm sure, it, I'm sure it's, it's very, it's very, very well made. So thanks for sharing, Josephine. Oh, That's fun. No problem. I yeah, have to say guys. something, guys. We have more than Rioja and Rias Baixas here in Spain, okay? Yes, <laughs> we, we know. <laughs> Uh, this is that. This is a tennis game. Rio Harris Baisa. Rio Harris Baisa. Rio Harris Baisa. Uh, well, I'm drinking a uh, wine from Carignana, uh, the Good. 2017 uh, Viña Stefanita Syrah. So it's 100% Syrah. Uh, I was actually in the region last September with Kat, and we we explored the very rocky soils of the vineyards. Uh, and this particular vineyard is, I believe, like 3,000 
three, yeah, uh, at an altitude of 800 meters. Um, yeah, it was very fun, and it's a it's a very strong wine, lots of fruit. I'm enjoying it on its own, but I could also have it with some Spanish cheese. Well, Charlotte's got a bunch of cheeses up there. I know she's not, you know, I mean, they're just, uh, uh, you know, eating their cheese and their pepperoni, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for sharing, Steph. And, and Jose Carlos, we do know that there is more than just Rias Baixas and, and uh, Rioja. Uh, I mean, but I, I have to tell you something that somebody had mentioned before. Oh, see, yeah, Trish has a pre rat but the, the you know, I think uh, it was either Jose Carlos or, or Tom. San Juan brought uh, Mustiguillo as well, so yeah. that's very nice. I had but, gin. What's his <laughs> And Kat has gin. But the, I mean, the wine from- Carinena last night. I had a wine from Carinena last night. The, the the wines from the Madrid region, and I say this in all seriousness, are absolutely incredible. Um, the newest no no, no. The, the 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 wines from Madrid are really bad. <laughs> Believe me, just a few of them are very good. But well, the ones that we're seeing in the states, let me put it that way. Terrible. Let me put well, it. Let me see exactly. Let me tell us exactly which wines from Madrid are good. <laughs> the wines from Madrid are bullshit. But believe me, there are a few of them that. <laughs> Very, very good. Uh, let me qualify that. So the ones that we tend to see in the, in the States, at least they get to California. Um, I mean, there are some really, really great producers that are producing from, you know, what, you know, uh, Garnacha from the Gredos Mountains. Um, and so I'm hoping to see, you know, I mean, the curb go way up when it comes to, to the wines from Vinos de Madrid. Um, so okay, let's see who else wants to share what they are uh, what they're drinking. We have about ten more minutes. Okay, um, Sean Hackett. That does not look like a Sean. <laughs> You're okay. Let me un let me unmute you. Hold on. Uh, all right. Shauna, can you hear me? Yes. What's your name? Shauna. Oh, you're Sean. It's Shauna. Okay, yeah. sorry. I thought it was Sean A. Hackett. It's no, Shauna. Okay. And uh, I am in Belfast here in Northern Ireland. I don't know how I've ended up in this chat with all you uh, American guys. <laughs> Cheers to Belfast. Cheers. Um, and Jose, I also have something different. I've got a Chacoli. So, good. Chacoli. Uh, That's very good. Thank you. Chacoli. And there's a reason for this. It's because tonight I am drowning my sorrows because myself and my husband were due to go to San Sebastian in the morning for... Oh. Four days. <laughs> no, so that's why I'm drinking Chicoli. You don't have to go to San Sebastian and stay at home, believe me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, have, I'm bringing San Sebastian to me. So this is um, Gitariaco Chacolina. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Gitariaco Chacolina. Um, is, that, is that Amos Toy? Amos Toy is the producer? Amos Toy, yeah. yeah. Amos Toy. Um, very fresh, very acidic, very tart apples, really light bodied and just delicious. Got that little residual spritz that you expect with the chacoli. So, yeah, very that's nice. an awesome happy hour wine too. Yeah, yeah. yeah they make they also make a gorgeous rosado, which we had as a team at a team outing in Kansas City. So if you can find the rosé, it's fantastic. Yeah, well, I was going to visit the winery and try the rosé, but one. Maybe next year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Great choice. Just, just, a, just a question. Is, is that chocolate is drinkable? Yeah. Okay, then, then it's not a good chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be, you know what I mean? It has to be really, really hard. But it's okay. It's, it's just, a, uh, just kidding. Okay. But, no, is, uh, believe me, the, the original chocolate is that I, I've been tried for the last not for the last, uh, 25, 30 years ago, it was uh, a, a vinegar. And yeah. this is what they like to, to, to drink there. So this is why I say that is, if this chocolate is drinkable, probably it's not that good chocolate, but of course I- Okay. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a very good chocolate. It's, it's, okay. The same thing about rosé chocolate. Rosé chocolate, people don't drink it in Spain. In, in the no, North. no, this, this is something for for Basque country. So the rest of the of the country don't drink chocolate. Believe me. <laughs> well, I think do they drink and does do the Basque drink the rosé version of chocolate, Jose Carlos? Well, this is something I, I love. Some of of these rosé chocolates. 
<laughs> and there, no, no, believe me, there are a few of them very, very good. Uh, okay. If you if you try that uh, uh, authentic Vasco, a real Basque people, if you try them to drink rosé chacolí, believe me, they, they are going to throw this to your face. Are they going to beat? Yeah, they'll beat you up. I got it. Okay. <laughs> But more than that, uh, there are a few of, of rosé very, very good. I, I love this. I believe yeah, me, I prefer a very good rosé, a very good uh, rosé chacolí more than many of the whites there. So. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, I'm glad they make it for, for the export market then because it's phenomenal. And if you guys have ever tried, and, and Shauna, when you get there, if you've ever tried any sparkling, uh, chocolate, there are some really, really good ones out there too. And I, Amas Toy makes a, makes a Rosado um, sparkling as well. Oh, that's very good. So, hey, Shana, okay. what's, the, what's the alcohol on that? Is that about 11.5? 10.5. 10.5. Yeah. So you can really drown your sorrows. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's a, that's a, that's a 10 a.m. wine right there. Yeah. <laughs> No, but I have to say something. This is one of the best producers. Even today, making uh, commercial chacolí, this is one of the best producers there. Yeah. In, yeah. in Getariaco Chacolina. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks Thank for you. sharing, Shauna. Okay. We Thank hope you. you get there soon. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anybody else want to share? We, let's do, let's see, we hey, got Rick. probably room for one or two more. Oh, Mary? Yeah, I just want to say hello, everybody. Um, I'm in the I'm in the Spanish Wine Scholar uh, course. So. Yay, she's one of my students. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so I have also a Verdejo um, that I got at my local wine shop here in Austin. I'm in Austin, Texas, and it's very warm today. It's 92 or something. Um, it's not quite. It's not as fancy as Rick's <laughs> by any mean. It means, but it's um, it's from Albacete, so it's not from Reda, which I think was is something to you know that's kind of notable, right? Um, hundred percent Verdejo, and it's it's very you know quaffable. <laughs> it's um, it's it's a uh, full Verdejo, uh, nice acidity and fresh, and yeah. So is it is it hundred percent Verdejo you said, or does it have any Sauvignon Blanc in it? It's a hundred percent. It is a hundred percent. Okay. So, yeah. 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 So cheers, Super. cheers, everybody. That's fine. Thanks for sharing, Mary. Thank you. Sure. All right, let's do uh, let's do two more, um, and let's see. I, I see a few people that I haven't heard from. Charlotte, you're smiling, and I know you want to share. So, um, <laughs> so go cool. for it, girl. Okay, I don't know anything about wine. Um, I you know what you like, though, right? What? You know what you like, right? I know I prefer Primitivo and Italian wines, um, but this one is pleasantly, surprisingly good. Um, it's the Montsant, and it's very smoky. In my opinion, it's smoky for my taste, and it's also um, spicy, but I like that about it. It's also pretty, I don't know, it's, it's very full body compared to Primitivo, in my opinion, and I like it. It paired really well with the pepperoni and cheese that we were eating earlier. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's 15 degrees alcohol, I guess, is what you wine connoisseurs say. But that's about all I know. That's about all I know. Does it have the, the year of the, the vintage year on there? Sure. Yeah, it did. I looked at, oh, 2017. 17, okay. And does it have the, the blend on there? That, that producer tends to use a lot yes. of- Yes. Yeah. So it's a Mazzuolo, 50%, Syrah, 25%, and a Garnacha, 25%. Perfect. So Mazzuolo for you guys is Carignan, Carignana. Um, that's what they call it in, uh, in, in other parts, in Catalonia. Um, but this producer, uh, Camblau, actually, I was actually in, in that region about 10 years ago, and they, um, I saw their Syrah out there. They do use a lot of Syrah, um, which... It is, I mean, is usually a small percentage of blends in, in the Priorat and Monsant. And for those of you guys who aren't, so, so the Priorat sits, it, it, it's kind of like, is right in the center here. And the Monsant circles the Priorat almost like a, like a, like a complete donut. 
And so what's, uh, what's, if you're looking for really good quality wines um, at a much better price than the Priorat, it gives you a similar taste profile. The wines from Monsant um, are, would be your go-to. Um, so great, thanks for sharing guys. Yep. Oh, also, I want to say this was like, it was pretty affordable. I want to say it was only like 15 or $16 from the local grocery store. Yep. Yep. And it's, and they're, and they're a good producer. They're a solid producer. So, um, I mean, that's, that's a good picture of what the month, you know, what Monsant can produce at, at that price point, especially for 15 bucks. Yeah. All right. One more. Who is going to be the last one to share? Uh, I'm going to have to call on somebody, aren't I? Okay. Uh, how about Haley? You're almost center square for me. So you just popped up in my eyesight. So. Hi, let me just grab my bottle really quick. Okay. It's in the fridge. So she's drinking a red. I'm kidding. Okay. Um, <laughs> so it's a uh, Fabula. It's a 2018 Garnacha. 13.5% is from Carniana. So, but I, I know a few of our team members are drinking this with me, so if they want to comment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good. No, it is. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good, it's a, that's from Panisa, right? But I guess Panisa. Yeah. De Panisa. Yep. Yeah. yeah uh, it's, it's very fruity. Um, I really love the, the fruit undertones to it and it's good for a day like today. <laughs> <laughs> now are you guys in new york or kansas uh we're both in kansas city you are okay okay so like helen you guys had a nice day and so it's a perfect day to actually chug some rosado yes. yeah <laughs> <laughs> awesome does anyone have any questions for rick we're coming up uh, on our hour so if you have any questions about visiting spain for you know wine tourism or anything like that or anything any questions you want to direct for, for Rick? Uh, now or Jose Carlos. Yeah, or Jose Carlos. Yeah, you wish you could do it, yeah. <laughs> but right I now know. you can't. <laughs> yeah. this, this is not the right to believe me. Yeah, no, I'm sure. Unfortunately. So, uh, by the way, I want to say something, Rick. Did you Go let ahead, me please. say something? Yeah, please, please, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, especially for, for the people, uh, of course, for the people in the U.S. and for the people out of the of out of New York, it's a. Uh, uh, I don't want to, to freak you out, but uh, believe me, you have to stay at home. Uh, this outbreak is devastating, and. I, I excuse me for for telling this. This probably this is not the moment, but I want to say to all my friends in the U.S. This is this is very serious. So stay at home. This is the best the best way to avoid the infection. <clears throat> and I know because it happened the same here in Spain two weeks ago. I know that probably you you don't see this like a problem now, but. It, it go, it's gonna hit the US uh, very hard. So please stay at home, uh, say this thing to the rest of your people, to your families, and, and, um, and follow the, the, the instructions from the, the governments. Um, unfortunately, your, your governments are not very, at this point they are not serious with this, with this thing, but, uh, you can do it. So the best way you can, the best thing you can do now is stay at home. And uh, drink lots drink of Spanish wine. wines. And, exactly. uh, uh, all right. Yeah. That's, and that's the best way is drink, uh, and I'm sure the Italians would say drink a lot of Italian wine. Yeah. So I, I don't want to miss this opportunity to tell you this thing. So well, and, and I mean, Jose, Jose Carlos is, is in the middle of it. I mean, he's two or three weeks ahead of us. And so he does come at this with, you know, with a lot of experience. And so, you know, I, but, you know, to end on a, a little bit of a happier note, and I know Jose Carlos, you're just giving, giving, giving everybody a reality check. Um, I think this is a really cool and fun way to get to meet people that we don't know. Um, I mean, I know a handful of you guys um, very well. 
And I think this is really fun to be able to spend time uh, doing this. You know, we, you know, we're all, you know, cooped up, you know, for most of us who live, you know, are either New York or California or, you know, our, where, where our states are very, very, are being much stricter than other parts of the, of the country. And, you know, but to Jose Carlos's point, you know, everybody just needs to, you know, stay safe, take things seriously um, and drink through your cellar. I just kind of started figuring out. So I've been watching this, um, for those of you who, who guys know Skernik, Skernik Wines, um, if you follow him, he's really, he's, he's awesome. He's been one of the big people in the forefront of the tariff situation. Um, but he posts every day now like a hashtag WTF wine. And so he's like, I'm just going into the cellar. I'm pulling out my good stuff. I'm enjoying what I've got. And, um, and I think that that's, you know, we all talk about special occasion wines and we all have them, you know, hidden away somewhere. The special occasion for me is right now because I made it through another day. I don't even tell anybody that lives with me. And, um, and I think that, you know, this is the way for us to just really enjoy and share. Um, and so what I was going to tell you guys is uh, April 1st to the 30th, I'm actually going to do a 30 day series on, on Instagram um, called 30 days of Spanish wine. And so I'm going to do, so if anybody who doesn't, it's, you know, on Instagram, I'm at the Spanish wine guy, um, but I'm going to post every day, I'm going to post a different wine from a different region and kind of take you throughout Spain in a little bit of a taste of Spain, um, just as a way to help, you know, increase the exposure of Spanish wine, but also because we need these kinds of diversions right now. And um, I think they're always helpful. And I encourage you guys to participate. Um, I'm going to put a thing up, in, you know, a couple days before with the hashtag 30 days of Spanish wine. Um, and I encourage people to comment and share what they're drinking if they are. Um, and feel free to share it with your friends because I think, you know, as, as anything else, you know, the, the more connected, I feel like we're getting more connected as a world through this situation than we ever could be. Um, otherwise. So, um, Emma, did you have anything else that you wanted to, to share or say um, before we uh, end our first virtual happy hour? Which I'm <laughs> be more. Yeah, thank you guys for coming and sharing what you're drinking with us. This was really a fun experience, and thank you to Rick and Jose Carlos for also joining us. Um, I hope that we can recreate this again in the future we're planning on doing it every two weeks and having a different theme each week so yeah if you have any feedback for me or for us how to make this you know a better experience or anything like that just let me know or if you want to um know exactly what everyone was drinking i can also make a list and send that out to you guys can i, can I ask a question? thanks emma cheers thanks i wanted Thank to you, a question. wait trish has a question I wanted to ask iPad. iPad oh. <laughs> I, I got in here late and I couldn't figure out the system and I think I might have texted Emma. I, I know I had a number and I got in late and for some reason I couldn't get the video. So I never got to really explain why I love this wine or, but now I have a different question of apocalypse wines as my cellar is in lockdown in Pasadena, California. I can't get out of my cellar. So I, I only have what I have here at the house. And I have a 99 and a 2004, and I don't know which one of these I should drink this weekend. <laughs> Where are they from? Which region? Uh, I got the Tito, uh, I got Tito Pesquera, 99. Oof, Pesquera. That's, that's a very nice bottle of wine. I know it is. <laughs> yeah. And this one's probably, that's this one's probably nice a little too bottle. young, but I wanted to try it with a friend of mine. This is the Rota 2004 Reserva. And uh, these are the only two big, big bruisers that I have here at the house because I'm not going to be able to get access to my cellar uh, right now. Uh, we're here in lockdown in Los Angeles and we can't get yeah, I even think, access to I think we to. should drink one on Saturday and one on Sunday. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I've been doing plenty of that. I had uh, some, you know, I, I opened an 86 this past weekend. Is was one of those things where I decided just... I like that. I like that. Crazy. Week. I remember after 9-11, there was a w open that bottle. Do you remember the open the bottle yeah. night yeah. Movement that the Wall Street Journal editors started, which I really loved. And it was like, what are we saving it for? 
we're home, we can appreciate it more than ever before. So I think we should open these bottles shamelessly and with great affection for the people who made them and the people we're gonna share them with, so. Absolutely. I really appreciate great. everybody's time today. Emma, thank you for getting us virtually connected. Um, and cheers to all. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 Rick, cheers. Thank you, Rick. Remind us when it gets closer about your Spanish wine month. So we all want to be part of that. I yes. will. Okay. I will. So you guys all have a have a great week and uh, drink heavily. Oops, I didn't say that. Well, I kind of did. <laughs> drink uh, well and drink heavily. Well and and all, drink well and all. <laughs> well be respectful, and all. but drink and get through this. And Jose That's Carlos, awesome. you take care of yourself. We love you. Abrazos. Thank you so much, Helen. And believe me, you are going to have for five weeks to drink your whole cellar. That's so, great. That's a positive. Do it, do it slowly, please. That is a positive note for me that I get four to five weeks to enjoy. Unfortunately for iPad, he might be out of wine by then. <laughs> I, I do. I do only have about seventy-five bottles here in the house, but that that might run out by the end of this weekend. I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, everybody have a great week, and we'll talk. We'll see you next time. Okay. Cheers. Be waiting. I'll be waiting for you.